Welcome to Sales War Chest. Um, this is a series of webinars with Magnify Consulting. Um, we've come down the levels of lockdown. We're in a changed world, we're in a changed environment and Sales War Chest has been set up with a view to helping everybody with some tips and strategies to help you grow revenue in uncertain times. And um, we're so privileged to have some great people that have been willing to be part of the webinars. Um, today with me, I've got Nikki Sheehan from Trio Accounting. I'm now going to stop sharing my screen so that you can all meet Nikki. Okay, right. So Nikki Sheehan, welcome. You're from Trio Accounting and Trio Accounting, of course, is a very new business. I imagine you may have dreamed about Trio in your head for a while, but you've set <laughs> Trio up at oh, one of the most challenging times in history. And um, you've had lots of business experience and um, of course, being part of the Sheehan family with Greg, you've been part of businesses setting up and obviously watched businesses get set up. Um, so pleased that you could join us today. Um, would you like to say a couple of words and we'll kick off there? Oh, thank you. It's just an absolute pleasure to be here, actually, Mary. I, I feel like my um, the promotional stuff that you've done for me is, uh, has been a little bit hyped up, but I guess that's the difference between a salesperson and an accountant. You know, we're far more understated most of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's interesting that you say that because um, accountants have had such a massive part to play in helping all of us through this lockdown time. And I have to admit, sometimes I've reluctantly paid accounting fees because I couldn't always see the value. But of course, when lockdown happens, you're so glad you've got a business advisor in your corner. And yeah. I think that it's a time when your profession's really come into its own, really, hasn't it? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you, actually. It has been an opportunity for accountants to really step up and um, show uh, businesses exactly what we can do, because I think there's definitely this perception that accountants just look in the rearview mirror all the time and tell you, you know, tell you what happened, which you kind of already know, and then also tell you all the things that you can't do, you know, and, and all, you know, we're, we're kind of like the fun police a wee bit, and that's a very much a perception that um, people have of accountants, and they don't stop to think that actually, uh, accountants can really add value to your business because we take the numbers and, and translate that into, um, you know, what's happening in real life for you and vice versa. Mm, mm. Yeah, I know. And actually, if you've got somebody that can translate your numbers into plain English, suddenly you can actually make better decisions, which is so yeah. vital right now, isn't it? You know? Oh, it's, it's essential right now. And I think that's one of the key things, you know, you have to be able to stop and plan and, um, and understand what's been going on in your business, what's likely to happen in your business, so that you've, you've got some steps to take, I guess. And you know, it can be really incredibly overwhelming when you know, all of this stuff is coming at you. But if you've got some options in the back of your mind, if, you know, we've always got plan A, but you, know, you need to have plan B, C, D, and E. If plan A doesn't work and then plan B doesn't quite work out, <laughs> then plan C, you know. And, and it helps to have some numbers to back up your thinking because a lot of us go by gut. Um, and so the numbers can sometimes just provide a little bit of reassurance and peace of mm. mind, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah. And having an outside person to look at those numbers with you, like, I have really appreciated that recently to help me understand what's going on with my numbers. And yeah. does this mean I should be looking at? Um, and I know as well, I've been hearing from business owners, different experiences that um, they are going through with COVID-19 with the lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, some businesses that I hadn't anticipated would have challenges have had challenges because their clients have had challenges. So it's had this yeah. massive flow on effect. Um, what have you been hearing from the coal face recently, Nikki? With how yeah, look, much the same as you, really. You know, um, every business has been impacted differently. You know, some businesses are in a position because, you know, they were essential services. So actually, they were doing really well, but feeling quite mm -hmm. guilty about it because they're sort of almost feeling guilty for prospering in other people's time of misery and stress. Um, mm -hmm. Other businesses have just got their back against the wall and uh, there's been a few where I've had to have conversations with, okay, let's look at the worst case scenario here and then work backwards. Mm. Um, fortunately, I think that they're, um, they're actually going to make it and what really encourages me is just how incredibly resourceful and resilient um, New Zealand business owners are. You know, Our backs might be up against the wall, but we're not going down without a fight. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I suppose it takes courage, whatever decision a business owner makes in that time, just because you decided it was time to do something else doesn't mean that you've lacked yeah. courage. It's actually hard to make a decision, isn't it? Sometimes I suppose. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it oh, is. Wow. And, um, what was really interesting to me, because I've only met you about two or three weeks ago, I think, is that you've started your own business. Of course, you've started businesses before, you know, but yep. you've started this business, Trio Accounting, just six weeks before lockdown. Um, what was that like? Well, um, yeah, it was interesting. I think that... Um, what I've learned about myself over the years is that when you kind of come to a crisis point, you know, there's that fight, flight, or freeze response. Mm -hmm. And so I've actually learned that what I do is I freeze first, and then I kind of do the flight thing where actually it's more running around in circles for a few minutes. Um, mm -hmm. And then I kind of calm and settle down. And that was exactly kind of how I kind of felt and reacted when we um, hit lockdown. It was like, oh, shit. Mm. What am I going to do? Because accountants are, at, at, although we kind of get this rep of, uh, of being, um, you know, very boring and staid and, and no good at talking with people, actually, um, there's a direct correlation for accountants with the number of coffees they have with people with the number of, um, you know, new clients they bring on because it actually oh, is a very, right. very relational um, um, kind of, um, well, it's, it's a strong people relationship. And so I was going, how on earth am I going to build a client base if I can't actually sit down in front of people and have coffee with them? So I kind of did a little bit of a, ah, and then I settled down and went, okay, let me take my own advice and sit down and do some planning just like I would do with a client. So I put myself in my client's shoes and had a little bit of a meeting with myself <laughs> and, um, and sat down and did the same planning process that I do with, with clients, which is where am I now? Where do I want to be? how am I going to get there? And did a bit of a brainstorm of all the different options that I could and paths that I could take. So, you know, it might have been, well, actually, maybe I need to go back and find a job or maybe I need to get into insolvency work. And, and I kind of worked all through all of the different options. And although some of those things were not particularly appealing as an option, they were options. And so once you've kind of worked through the worst case scenario, you then go backwards and go, okay, well, what are the ones that are going to give me hopefully the most opportunity? And, and that's pretty much what I did. So um, I, I signed up to the regional um, business partner network program and um, continued to be really active on social media and went, you know what, I've got, because I'm only a new business, my advantage is I have this time available to help businesses in need. So I just got amongst it and just started helping businesses out not expecting anything in return but just you know because at that you know those very early days you just kind of wanted to help people make sense of mm. what was going mm. on because there was so much panic um and that just you know that you know what comes around goes around right so it kind of came back and and you know I've been repaid with new clients because of the the time that I gave away for free um just wow. with helping other people out um and then, you know, work comes in through the Regional Business uh, Partner Network, and I've met some wonderful clients through that. And, you know, life just goes on, and it just starts to build momentum again. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, that's brilliant, actually. And um, so the other thing we talked about as well is, you know, there are obviously a lot of business advisors and accountants <laughs> out there. And, and initially I thought, gosh, that's brave, actually, you know, starting a business where there's already a lot of people, you could even say, is it a crowded market? And then of course, COVID happens and you realize, I don't know if we've actually got enough of these people in the <laughs> crisis. Um, but I suppose too, you were, you've probably thought about, you've got your own you know, very professional skills and your own special way of mixing them up. What's, yeah. the, what's the kind of entry for you know, what is already a developed market that you've put forward for Trio Accounting? How have you worked all that out? Yeah, I think, um, I guess it sort of came about because about this time last year, I was sort of at a bit of a crossroads as to where I went um, from a career perspective. Um, you know, I turned 50, um, youngest child's only a couple of years away from finishing school. There's kind of like freedom in the sites, actually. But yet there's still, you know, 15 odd years or more of, 
of a working career and actually that's quite a long time so I was kind of just sort of going well, what am I going to do where am I going to go and I was very fortunate to take part in a leadership program through um, Women in Leadership New Zealand and as part of that a lot of those leadership programs like because it's been a year-long program, very intense personal development happens in that um, rather than just being taught a whole lot of leadership techniques. Mm. And so that was kind of an opportunity for me to actually step back and kind of look at where my sweet spot was as far as career. So that's kind of this combination of, um, or, or the meeting point of um, your gifts um, your passion and your purpose in life, which sounds all very lofty, right? But actually what it really is, and if you break it down, is what are you, what are you good at? What are your skills? Um, what are you, um, you know, what do you care about? And then what do you, um, you know, what does the world need? And so for me, that kind of meeting point was working with women to help them run more successful businesses. Um, and I kind of looked at whether I could continue to do that at right way or whether, um, you know, it would be better for me and, and kind of fit some of my longer term objectives if I actually started my own practice. And it was a phenomenally difficult um, decision to make because I, um, I have some, had worked with amazing people um, at right way. And I know that one of them's on here. So <laughs> a bit oh. of a hello to you. <laughs> to Doc. Um, and, and it was a, an incredibly difficult decision, but I recognized and looked around and went, you know, there's nobody else in the, in the marketplace that really is catering specifically to women business owners and I knew from the women you know female clients I work with they have um, an additional set of challenges that um, a lot of male business owners don't have and, and aren't even aware of and a lot of male accountants aren't aware of the fact that you know women struggle so much more than men with um, imposter syndrome with balancing um, work and their other commitments and um, that a different approach works really well with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah it's it is quite different isn't it um, sometimes as a woman having these extra things that you're juggling and I know for myself sometimes I've pretended that I'm not juggling anything else because I don't want people <laughs> to think that I'm incompetent but actually yeah. They all know that I'm juggling other things, you know. Yeah. Um, I must admit, I remember when our youngest child hit five, I was 95% relieved that she was going to school and that we didn't have to juggle childcare anymore. And then yeah. the other 5% of me felt really bad about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> you are, you're struggling, aren't you? You're trying to get some sort of a foot on the career ladder so that even if you're working part-time, you can get back on decently when everybody's yeah. at school. But yeah. even if you work part time, you're still juggling because you're not really having a lot of downtime. Yeah, yeah, mm. and I think you know women tend to approach business quite differently to men. So um, the statistics show that women actually run more um, or fail less frequently than than uh, male owned businesses, but that they grow a lot slower because they're more cautious and and less willing to build you know beat the house on the on the business so just mm. needs to take a slightly different approach and often what I find is you know particularly with women that have taken time out of their career to have children they're really lacking in confidence so that was where the trio kind of um, approach came from which was you know yes I'm going to provide you accounting and accounting and take care of your taxes um, and then provide the business advice, which is what you know most accounting firms do. Mm. But the third element was actually the coaching and the mentoring side of it. And it's in doing that that I see my my female clients in particular really start to thrive, and their, their mm. businesses grow and they do well. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, it's got to be about more than please keep me out of jail and I'll pay you some money for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, funny enough, I do actually use that expression with um, with clients sometimes when we're talking about the tax rules, and I, I kind of go, you know, I don't make the rules. My job is to just keep you out of jail. So. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh dear. Wow. Oh, just, I'll say hello to a couple of others that have come in. Hello, um, people that have come in midway. If you're new to a webinar, we're here with Nikki and um, do use the question and answers in the chat. Um, haven't got any questions that I can see so far, but if you do pop one in there, we'll be delighted to answer it. So it's really interesting, isn't it? Because there are so many accountants and business advisors, but what you've talked about with your three-pronged approach really is quite different. And um, I was really fascinated when I talked to you because um, 
one of the books that we've reviewed here with the Magnify Sales Book Club is a book called Blue Ocean Strategy. And what that's essentially about, I don't know if you read that book at all. No, I haven't, no. Oh, I love that book so much. But um, what it's really about is in a market where there's already saturation or there's already a lot of people, you can go in and you can do the same thing as everybody else. And actually the ocean will turn red because there'll be so many fish in that part of the ocean that it will turn red with blood because some of them will eat each other and they'll just be in a big price <laughs> war down to the end. But what you've got to do, if you can, is differentiate yourself. And if you do enough differentiation, you've almost really created your own brand new market. Mm. And mm. you're kind of out there on your lilo in a blue ocean with your pina colada. Nobody's around you. And then a few of the people in the red ocean eventually look over and go, oh, it's quite good out there where she is. I should have a go at a bit of that. And then there's this whole cycle of innovation that has to go on. Yeah. So yeah. that we can stay in a blue ocean or in a, a space where we've got a lot more opportunity um, so that, you know, we're not, you know, getting caught up by others as they come in as well. And it was, it seems to me as I talked that you've actually started a blue ocean moment there, which is wonderful. Yeah, potentially. I mean, I, um, oh, I think, I think certainly with the, the women um, as you know, the, the woman and business owner um, sort of aspect of it, I think definitely. And you know, I sort of talk to women and and kind of say to them, you know, what I do is help women have more time, more money, and less guilt. And you just see their eyes light up, and they're like, oh my gosh, I need more of that. Um, and and the funniest thing was um, a, a former colleague who um, has now started his own practice um, messaged me to say, what is this guilt you're talking about? And it was just, you know, like he just had no clue because, you know, he's, he's a guy, he doesn't experience that day-to-day -day guilt that women have of, you know, leaving their family and, and not being at the, um, you know, the school swimming sports or, um, you know, being able to do the after-school pickup because they're, they're busy focused on their job. So, but there are a lot of accountants out there who are doing that business advice and um, and not just looking in the rear view mirror. I think there's um, within the accounting profession you can kind of broadly break it down into three groups of the ones that just do tax returns and they they they're really old school. There's a, a bunch in the middle ground that know that they need to do more business advice but aren't really sure how to go about it. And yes. then there's the more progressive firms, you know, like like Trio like, and like Rightway who, you know, are very focused on um, actually making lives better for business owners. Mm, mm. And, and it's quite unique, isn't it? Because um, as an accountant, you know, us business owners and leaders trust you guys with our stuff and some yeah. of it's not the stuff that we tell everybody else. Oh, yeah. But we have to tell you the truth so that you can actually help us. And even if we don't tell you, you've got our zero feed so you can see what's going on yeah. anyway. Yeah. And, um, I, yeah. and I kind of yeah. liken that to being able to kind of, um, you know, walking into your house and opening up your fridge and kind of rifling through your fridge to actually, you know, <laughs> look at you know, what, you, <laughs> what you've been eating. Or worse still, it's kind of like, you know, I can rifle around in your undie drawer because I've got all of this financial information, you know, like I, I really know what's going on. And as accountants, you know, we do know what's going on. We know when people's marriages are in trouble and, um, you know, when they're going through all of those financial stresses because it comes out in the conversations that you, you have with clients. Mm, mm, yeah, it's a very it's a very privileged situation, mm. isn't it, to it have is. that kind of confidence with people. Yeah, and I suppose too, like, when your accountant or your business advisor takes you through something like lockdown and some businesses mm -hmm. have been very badly impacted yeah. um, that relationship will be so deep afterwards like from a sales perspective you would probably never leave someone that actually looked after you during that time and was gracious about various aspects of how they did their service you know so I'm yeah. sure it's been a really good time obviously for yourself um, and for others to to just show your clients how you yeah. can actually look after them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You very much, you know, when you have a really good relationship with your accountant, you know, you know, we're walking alongside you, you know, we're as excited about your successes as you are. And mm. equally, we, we uh, stress about the financial difficulties that you are in just as much as you do, sometimes maybe even mm. more, because we've kind of got a bigger, um, a, a maybe a better ability to see what's coming at you. Um, mm. and, and I know that for many accountants, you know, lockdown, that whole period was a, 
incredibly tough time emotionally for them because mm. they weren't dealing with all of the stresses on their business like every other business owner but they were also trying to help you know yeah all of their clients um go through that and in a normal at any given point in time you, you'd have a handful of clients that are experiencing real tough um cash flow issues and mm. and stresses like that but it's it's never in my lifetime have we seen it happen like this with wow. you know, all at once every client yeah. is yeah. yeah and of course lockdown happened what six days before the end of the financial year so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't very good timing really was it <laughs> no no <laughs> so for some it's okay but for, for many accountants it was like just an added stressful that really nobody mm. needs and actually April's a really busy month for accountants as well. So mm, mm, yeah, it's a, yeah, it was a difficult time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, goodness me. And um, we've heard a lot, haven't we, Nikki, about people have been talking about pivoting and then other people have been saying, don't talk about that pivot word again. I'm getting tired of it. But there is a lot of pivoting going around. And yeah. I, think I heard someone say, well, are you pivoting or are you accelerating? And what they meant was, are you actually just doing the things that you had on your big to-do list and you never got to, so you're accelerating, or are yeah. you radically changing? Yeah. And then, of course, there's the whole, particularly with restaurants and hospitality, they've had to leave a whole section of their business behind for a couple of months mm. and morph into a delivery space. Yeah. And for some of them, that's been hugely successful. Some of them may not have been able to do that. Um, yeah. What sort of pivots have you seen and um, what sort of courage have you seen from clients over the last few weeks about pivoting and changing during the pandemic? Yeah, I think it's a, that, that pivot word is an interesting one, right? And, and I agree with you. Like some businesses are pivoting, they're doing, because to me a pivot is kind of like a, you know, a, at least a, a 90 degree, if not a 180 kind of um, mm. change in what you're doing so some are pivoting and doing something you know bringing in completely new lines of services or products that they, they would never have considered in the past others um, are accelerating and and you know it's been the opportunity to kind of go okay I've been thinking about this doing this for a while so I'll you know put my foot down and and do it and then others are just going okay so plan a is kind of you know that roads are not quite as as you know smooth as I thought it was going to be, maybe there's a bit of a, a slight detour that I can take um, in, in the way that I do things. But things like, you know, a lot of businesses either have had to get up online fast or um, they've had to um, or, or put more of their product up online. So they might have been half doing it, but all of a sudden that's had to be their primary focus. Um, mm. you know, there are, you know, new service lines that I'm seeing come in um, as offerings. Um, I've got a couple of cleaning companies actually, and, and they're now kind of going, okay, well, you know, one's bought a fogging machine to offer fogging for disinfectant. Um, mm. Another one's kind of going, okay, well, what about carpet cleaning? So they're now offering carpet cleaning services. So sometimes it's about, something completely new. Sometimes it's um, just complementary kind of offerings. Mm, mm. Yeah. yeah, Oh, most definitely, yeah. And is that the sort of thing that as a business advisor, that business advisors, you know, from the accounting and business advisory section, is that something that you would get into with clients or is it more of a situation where ideas come from them or, you know, because I imagine a lot of stuff comes up when you're coaching and mentoring someone and you can probably see stuff that they can't see yeah and I think that's where it like you know coaching is where you're kind of drawing it out of um the other person so you know there's a lot of knowledge you know because there's a lot of in-depth industry knowledge you know the clients I work with they know their business really well so sometimes yes. it's just about actually drawing it out of them and um, helping weigh up those options and then other times it's more of that mentoring where you kind of can bring in your own experience and go okay well I've seen this work so you know is that an idea worth considering so it's a kind of a bit of a balance of mm. how it works but my approach is always very much a teamwork um, mm. sort of approach you know I don't have all the answers um, and my clients don't expect me to have all the answers um, <laughs> but but neither do they so at, when you you know that is that kind of two heads is better than one yeah. Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's brilliant. Oh, good. And I know as well, um, some of the people I've been talking with have been very stressed. And one of the things I've noticed, and it's true of all of us, sometimes when you're very stressed, you can't actually see the good things. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's very easy, I think, isn't it, to get overwhelmed by 
what you've lost or what's changed. Yeah. Um, what are some tips that you would give business owners to help them maintain good mental health during such huge change that we're going through? Yeah. I think there's a couple of things actually. Um, so one of the first things I said really early on was it's okay to have a meltdown because a bit like, um, you know, a, a bit like a butterfly. So when you've got a, a caterpillar changing to a butterfly, they actually, like in the chrysalis, it actually liquefies before it reforms as a butterfly. So sometimes you actually just have to have that complete meltdown and mm. get all that emotion out and then build yourself back up. Um, mm. The things that I kind of find really useful is journaling. So, um, you know, just to actually have this just absolute on a bit of paper, which then, you know, half the time I end up just chucking in the fire. Um, but, you know, I'll just have this stream of consciousness of all the things that are worrying me and I get it all out on paper because there's something about, and I don't know all the psychological stuff, but there is something that quite remarkable about taking it from here, putting it out on paper. It's kind of like you're not hanging on to it quite so much. Mm. You kind of dump all of that stuff but then to help move back into kind of a more positive frame of mind, I always kind of finish up with what are the key things that I'm grateful for, that I'm thankful for, you know, what, what's working well, you know, so that you don't stay in that pit of despair. Um, mm. And then there's all the usual stuff of, you know, actually, like for me, exercise is massive, you know, to actually go out and go for a walk and get some fresh air and step away from a desk. Um, it, it helps, you know, bring mm. you back into... Um, some it does actually. On it, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I know I've been doing a bit of gardening during lockdown and um, sometimes I put pictures of my seedlings on LinkedIn. I'm not sure that they're the most popular photos, but <laughs> I like to think of the correlations between growing a business or growing new clients and yeah. what it takes to actually raise something from seed, you know, and how yeah. much effort that takes sometimes and how it's actually worth taking those steps. But no, it is. It's very good, isn't it, to do something outside. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And I think the other thing is just kind of being aware of what's going on with you from a mental health perspective, because I think when you're in the midst of it, um, you're often aware that things aren't quite right, but you don't really, you, we kind of have this attitude of, oh, we'll just soldier on. But sometimes it actually gets to a tipping point where if you don't do something, mm. um, and take some action you're actually going to roll over into depression or, or full-blown anxiety that's a whole heap harder to come back from and so mm -hmm. actually one of my more most popular LinkedIn posts actually I had shared an infographic that basically was kind of a quick check-in of you know how am I sleeping and how am I eating and how am I feeling and it kind of had these um actually we talked about not sharing a screen, but I probably should have had this <laughs> to share with you. Um, I'll have to get you back. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, it was a really useful, um, really useful um, infographic to help identify that, you know, what you could be doing and what position you're at um, in terms of needing as additional sort of support for your mental health. Mm. Um, and I think depression.org has a um, really, really good, a um, couple of questionnaires. So if you think that you may be sort of suffering from anxiety or depression, um, they've got some questionnaires, you know, mm. that you can fill in self-assessment things that will give you a bit of an indication of whether you should get some additional support. Mm. Yeah, I saw that checklist. I thought that was actually very handy because yeah. um, like I've worked some quite long hours and after you've worked long hours for a few weeks, you actually don't even realize that you're working long hours anymore. Yeah. Until people mm. say, you're working really long hours and you are a bit grumpy around the edges at the end of the day. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, yes. So it is, it's helpful to have some, yeah. some tips to think about so that you can actually, and then you can be the best for all your clients as well. Yeah. What's yeah. the point in working that long and then sometimes stuff might come out at the edges if you weren't rested enough to deal with it well, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And we, and we don't make good decisions when we're really tired and we're mm. in, an, in that state of overwhelm. So, you know, mm. recognizing that that's the case for us and then, you know, getting an alternative perspective and, you know, yeah, it's really um, helpful. Yes, definitely. I'm just noticing, actually, we've got, um, we've got a good question in the chat. So I'll read it out because um, this is getting recorded. So question says, hi, Nikki, I'm already in a business but like you have been brave and created another business over lockdown. <laughs> awesome. Wonderful. That's good. So bracket something I've had in my head for many years. My question is irrespective of business industry, where would you initially put your marketing dollar and would you go ahead with some product 
due to all product not quite ready to launch. Really enjoying the discussion, smiley face. Oh, that's good. So where would you put your marketing dollar and would you get started on some parts of this, even if not all of it was quite ready? Um, oh, we could both put some thoughts there. What do you think, Nikki? Have you got any oh, that's, but that's some interesting questions. So interestingly, um, there was something like three or 4,000 new companies registered over lockdown. So um, yes. lots of people are busy thinking about <laughs> what they could do and, and maybe taking that time out to, um, yeah. Yeah, to realise some dreams. In terms of marketing dollars, um, I think it depends entirely on on what you're doing and what your what you know what your product is, what you're selling, who your target market is, as to where you would best spend that. Um, I think that there's a a lot of opportunity to really leverage what's going on in social media, um, and that's kind of been where my um, my focus has been is actually. But then I'm selling a service rather than a product. But you know, in terms of free stuff um you can't go past social media and just starting to get involved in business groups or you know groups that have relate industry related groups and actually st um, and special interest groups that might start to give you opportunities to share what you're doing you know most um you know the, there's a couple of um business groups like she owns it um, we've got a local water rapper woman in business group that I'm involved in so there's lots of there's lots of business groups on Facebook um, that um, you know are opportunities to be able to promote what you're doing so I'd hunt around for the best sort of social media stuff um, mm. Mm. yeah Oh, those are great suggestions. I would actually agree with all that as well and um, I think to your point Nikki about um, when you're doing things on social media, one of the things is, yes, it's no charge a lot of times, unless you decided to pay for advertising, which you could also do. Um, but the other thing too, is it gives you an opportunity to interact with your ideal clients and mm. actually find out what they think about this thing that you're creating or this product or this service, and then get some live feedback from real people that you'd like to sell to. And then you've actually got an opportunity to tweak that and to, make a better version of it and to just keep yeah. responding to customer feedback. So that's another wonderful aspect. Um, I just think, you know, if you haven't been able to do it yourself, get some help or get a sounding board to get really clear on the problem that you're solving and yeah. the people that you're solving it for and thinking about the language that you communicate that um, solution to those people, because that's the heart of it really, isn't it? Is that yeah. when your marketing turns into sales, um, actually being able to solve that problem um, yeah. and should you go ahead if it's not quite all ready um, I don't know my thought is without knowing more I wouldn't say yes you should or no you shouldn't sometimes you can you know like if you've um, if you're selling I don't know clothing for children and you've got one whole outfit ready you could probably promote that but if you've only got the booties and you haven't got the rest of the clothing for the new babies, then you probably should wait. Um, I suppose it depends how vital the stuff is that's missing. Um, any thoughts there, Nikki, on that one? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit the same as you. I think a, a lot of it comes down to um, you know, how, what kind of investment are you needing to make to actually get that product out the door? You know, like, are you going to have mm. to invest in a website to sell, um, you know, to, to sell online? You know, how, how, how are you going to sell it? Um, how expensive is it going to be? And how much do you need to invest to manufacture that product? So it's a bit of a, um, yeah, it's a bit of a, depends on the situation kind of um, answer. But I think that there's some other kind of theories in there, which um, are you could do potentially a soft launch to actually test that product and see what kind of reaction you get to it. Um, from your target market so that kind of ties in a little bit with what you're saying about using social media to get feedback um, so I think that's another kind of aspect that you could look at as well and you know there is that saying or there's a couple of sayings really but one is um, version one is better than version none and um, and with, <laughs> with software it's kind of if you wait till it's perfect you've shipped it too late you know so it depends a little bit on what that product is Mm, mm. Yeah, that's interesting because I was I did a little bit of a blog post about that maybe a week or so ago about the idea of launching something and comparing it with crossing the road. And so, you know, there are those people, aren't there, Nikki, and they'll and, and you know, I'm actually like this with my kids, they'll wait till the red man symbol is on and 
both of those cars that are coming have stopped and I've made eye contact with both of those drivers and everything's perfect and now I'm going to step out. But in the meantime, several people cross the road ahead of you because they can see that the actual traffic lights are going orange, they can see the cars are slowing, the ones that are coming are still several metres away. And so they look left, look right, and they keep looking as they go and they just zip out. Yes. And obviously while they're moving out there into the market or over the road, they're continually looking to see um, what's actually changing. Because if I just keep going blindly because that was my decision, if a car comes along, that would be most unfortunate. So if we keep looking, I suppose yeah. it's a bit like um, pivoting, pivoting the yeah. in the market. <laughs> As you go out, keep pivoting and moving around. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose if you haven't quite got all the vital bits, you can't take that first step sometimes. But what could you do? I would even think, you know, the social media, how could you be building a community about you that wants yeah. to discuss the problems that you're solving, even if yeah. you don't have the product right now, get those people on board ready so that, you know, when you are ready to start something um, yeah. that you can. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yes. Wow. I'll just check. I don't think there's any more questions there. We've had such an awesome conversation, haven't we? But um, I just think what's amazing is, the decision to actually just step out and be brave and start something. And um, again, I'd say, you know, if you wait till it's perfect, you've probably yeah. missed the market opportunity. Yeah. Um, and I think too, um, people are loving authenticity right now. Um, mm. That's really a massive change. And so to me, that means that the market's quite forgiving. So if your offering's mostly ready, but it's not completely perfect, well, yeah. you know, you're probably selling to a client who's got a three-year-old crying in the back of the Zoom call and yeah. <laughs> probably worried about that. But actually, we all know that everybody's had to adjust and change. And so it is, it is a good environment, I think, to start something new in because we know that everybody's had to change, don't we? Yeah, we do. And I think you're right about the authenticity. And I think people are, a li uh, I think um, as long as you're being authentic, yeah, um, people are willing to be a little bit more forgiving than perhaps they were in the past. Mm, mm, yeah, oh, definitely. Well, um, I might just share the screen for a moment because, um, of course, being Sailor's War Chest, we, um, we have to share one of uh, Winston Churchill's sayings. We are actually just about running out of sayings because some of the sayings keep getting repeated. So, um, hang on, we should be able to skip through the slides. Oh, look, there you are, Nikki. There's our promo slide. So here's Winston. We'll just pop that down there. So last word from Winston Churchill let our advanced worrying become advanced thinking and planning. And this is amazing because when I looked through my document with all my Winston Churchill sayings, I saw this and I thought, oh, we can't use this because we used it last week. And if you came to Sales War Chest last week, you might recognize it. And then I thought, what a shame we can't use that again because it's such a great saying for a business advised discussion, you know, discussion with Nikki. And so I've had another saying in there. And then Nikki said, oh, I really like this particular um, Winston Churchill quotation so we've used this one um, and of course you can definitely get in touch and we'll be sending out an email obviously with the replay after the webinar so if you want to talk some more with Nikki or just understand how trio accounting can help your business challenges um, Nikki n-i-c-k-i-e at trio t-r-i-o accounting dot co dot nz and you're welcome to say hello to magnify myself hello at magnifyconsulting.co.nz. I'm just going to stop sharing for a moment because I did see, did I see another question in there? Sorry, I thought I saw something, but um, no, it didn't quite see it. So um, basically, um, that's probably our sales war chest webinar for the week. Nikki, it was wonderful to have you along and to share the discussion. And um, thank you everybody for coming and for making it a more rounded discussion with your feedback. Cool. Thanks for having me, Mary. It's been great. And I'm looking forward to having a coffee in real life sometime soon. Yes, definitely. Brilliant.